G'day. Most likely, the majority of riders have never heard of the Kawasaki Square 4. But as most of you older dudes, or girls of course, would know, back in the early 1970s, when it came to outright power and speed, Kawasaki ruled the roost. And luckily for many of you, this bike never made it into production, because if it did, you might not even be watching this video because you'd probably be dead. You see, in the early 1970s, Kawasaki had their three-cylinder inline two-strokes, which at the time were pretty vicious bikes to ride. If you haven't already watched the channel's video on these so-called widow makers, no! I suggest you watch it, because these bikes earned a bad reputation which they just did not deserve. And of course, Kawasaki also had the mighty Z900 inline four-cylinder four-stroke. However, all these bikes had some flaws. The large frontal area of these wide engines affected aerodynamics, and the two-strokes did have some issues with cooling of the middle cylinder. The Square 4 project addressed both these issues. It was only as wide as a twin cylinder, and it also had liquid cooling. Details on the bike are pretty sketchy, to say the least, and all I could really find out is that Kawasaki's aim with the development of this bike was for outright performance and nothing else. No power figures are available, at least none that I could find. Apparently Kawasaki even developed some kind of fuel injection system as an alternative to the two carburetors the bike used. Of course, Square 4 engines were nothing new. The Aerial Square 4 existed many years before this. And the Aerial was a pretty good bike too, by the way. But the Aerial was a large capacity four-stroke, and Kawasaki knew that two-stroke engines were far superior to four-stroke engines when it came to weight and outright performance. The bike itself wasn't very far from going into production. But unfortunately, due to increasingly stricter emission laws, Kawasaki decided not to proceed with production, and the bike was canned in 1973. If the bike's production had proceeded, I have no doubt whatsoever that this bike would have been the fastest and most powerful bike of the era. What do you think? Cheers.